he has never, ever, ever done walking meditation before. Wonderful. Good. Great. So, walking meditation is easy. And you already know how to walk, right? You're halfway there. All, all we do then is we bring an awareness to our walking. And just like with our breathing meditation, we're already breathing, right? But we bring an awareness to it. And that awareness changes what is happening. So when we're walking, we're bringing a very special awareness to this practice. We're becoming aware of the movement of our feet. Going left and right, left and right. I'll show you what I mean in a second, but why should we do walking meditation? So the Buddha gave several good reasons. He said, firstly, it exercises the body. So that's good, isn't it? Already, some of you, this is your first ever meditation retreat. You're starting to find out that the body gets a little stiff if you sit for a long time. And you know, sometimes when we practice meditation, we practice meditation from before dawn all the way till 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. Whole day of meditation. So your body gets a little stiff sometimes, and it's good to exercise it to bring the blood back into the joints to stretch out the muscles. And so walking gives exercise to the body. That's why we often use it to alternate between sitting and a movement posture, like walking, so that when we come to sit, our body can feel good again. It's a good way to stretch those limbs. It also builds endurance. So the Buddha, he walked everywhere. He was 80 years old walking everywhere barefoot all the way across India, he had this endurance that came from practicing walking. It kept his body moving. He was healthy and fit. The walking meditation helps with our digestion. So it's good. If you just had a nice, big, delicious meal a little while ago, your body now is just putting all of its energy <laughs> into digesting, right? Right? And your brain is starting to turn off a little bit. And so doing some walking meditation helps the body to digest the food. The Buddha said that it was also very good for warding off sleepiness. So if you have a feel in your practice that you're starting to drop a little bit, then get up, do some walking meditation. You're still meditating. You're still bringing awareness to what you're doing. You're just moving. And it helps to ward off that feeling of getting tired and sleepy. It brings energy into the mind and body. But the main reason the Buddha said he taught walking meditation is because the samadhi, the, the, the meditation it produces, the, the the practice it produces lasts a long time. So this meditation that comes from walking, it lasts a long time. And perhaps you felt this when you do walking meditation. You, you feel like, ah, oh, I'm in the zone. Because you've trained the mind on this subject of meditation, the movement of your feet. And this awareness goes deep because it's a large object. The movement of the feet is quite obvious. It's not subtle like the breath. You know? And so we can see it clearly. And so we can develop a mind full of that object. But there are a few tips I want to share with you about walking meditation. 
the first is don't walk too slow. Walking really, really slowly actually puts a lot of pressure on your joints, on your muscles, and it becomes a little bit exaggerated. And we want to keep our walking as natural as possible. So you walk at a, a natural walking pace. You'll slow down a little naturally, but you don't need to walk super slowly. I remember a friend of mine, he used to love walking really slowly. He was really into it. And then he started doing walking practice outside of his apartment block. They called the mental health team because they thought that they thought he was he was not well. And I think that sometimes, you know, if our practice starts to become a bit exaggerated, then we're we're maybe not practicing the middle path. And if we need to slow down our actions so that we can see them, then we're never going to be able to integrate our mindfulness practice into our life. If we have to slow everything down to be mindful, then we're not developing a mindfulness that is natural. You know what I mean? Yeah? So we need to, to, to try to be as natural as possible in our practice of movement mindfulness. And then uh, the important thing is to walk naturally. You don't need to look at your feet. Your feet know what they're doing. If you do look at your feet, your neck gets crunched like this and you start to get a lot of tension. So we want to keep the body relaxed and comfortable, loose. So we don't end up really tight. And that happens when you walk slowly as well. And then um, keep your hands in front or behind. And Ajahn Chah didn't like people walking with their hands behind their back. He said they looked like gentlemen going out for a stroll. Um, and let's see. And then, ooh, I can quickly show you. So, a little demonstration. You want to have a point that you're focused on about 10 or 15, 20 steps. 15 to 20 steps is usually good. And we're just walking back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so you can have your hands in front or behind. And we're just going to walk and we're going to note and be aware of the movement of the feet. Right, left. Right, left, right, left. And then you get to this point. What are you going to do? You have to turn around. So some people like to stop and very mindfully start turning. So you can do that. Some people like to pause before they begin again. The reason for that is that in between here and there, even though it's just a few meters, it's like a whole ocean, right? <laughs> Anything can happen in between here and there. So that's why about this length is good, because you can maintain your mindfulness from here to there, hopefully. But if you get lost, then this pausing at each end might be useful for you. Some people just like to keep going so that they maintain that mindfulness. So it's up to you how you do that. Uh, but if you do too long a, a path, then you might find yourself getting distracted easily. If you do too short a path, then you're always turning, and that becomes a distraction of its own. So you saw that when I walked, I was walking quite naturally and quite relaxed. Don't become tense. And remember, the gaze is about two meters in front of you. So you don't need to look at your feet. Does anyone have any questions? So I'd like to leave that stuff there. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I think there's some room in here. Yeah, there's room in there. And there's room in here, um, whichever way you want to go. And there's also room on level G, the, the shrine room, the ground shrine room.
So time now is a mystery. It's almost quarter past two. So can you come back? We'll just do 20 minutes, 20 minutes of walking meditation. So quarter past means 35, 35 minutes past two. That sounds really specific. 2.35. Deal? Okay, good. So who wants to go downstairs? <laughs> Don't all jump at once. I'm going to go downstairs. <laughs> Anyone else? <laughs> Otherwise, you have to just have to find a spot here. So if you want to just take your cushions and put them away and find a lane to walk in, uh, please don't disturb that stuff. We're going to use that stuff when we come back. There's also this room here. And also, if you just want to sit and meditate, uh, find a perch over there somewhere. And I'll see you at 2.35.